morning. Many, many videos out there on how to do low heart rate or zone two training, or perhaps some of the physiology involved, but not much talk about why. Why did this focus on zone two training come about? Now, I'm not talking about training in the world of professional cyclists or runners. I'm talking about why it's recommended for us, for everyday people and how it affects our health and longevity. So it's all based on what's happening in zone two. So let's back up even further. Humans die of very predictable causes. We die of the same non-communicable diseases such as type two diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, fatty liver, and so on. Many of these diseases share the same root cause. It's, post, it's a poor metabolic health due to poorly functioning mitochondria. So your mitochondria are useful for oxidizing fat. They oxidize or burn fat to create ATP or energy. If we use glucose, that's glycolysis. And glycolysis does not occur within the mitochondria. Now, glycolysis can produce lactate, or will produce lactate, which the mitochondria can use. However, we're focusing on mitochondrial health and its effect on metabolic health. If we look at the very early stages of insulin resistance, where you need more insulin to drive the glucose into your liver or muscle cells, they find that the defects are in various transporters and proteins involved in the transport of glucose into the cell, so into the mitochondria. So we need to address uh, this um, mitochondrial issue. Uh, so how do we train mitochondria? Well, if we use mitochondria to burn fat and fat oxidation, then we need to train at a level that supports fat oxidation, and that is low heart rate training. So you can call it zone two, you can call it zone one or low heart rate training, but it's exercising below your aerobic threshold, which is where you start to produce lactate beyond a baseline level. We're always using some glycolysis. We are never, never, never using only fat oxidation to produce energy. But in zone one and zone two, we're using far more fat oxidation than we are uh, in zones three, four, and five, in a five zone model, of course. So. The reason why we recommend zone two training is because we want to improve our mitochondrial fitness and efficiency. If you exercise in zone two and you're using fat oxidation, your mitochondria are going to produce more proteins along the inner lining of the mitochondria to make the process of fat oxidation more efficient and more successful. You're going to develop more surface area within the mitochondria to accomplish these tasks as well. You're going to increase the number of mitochondria that you have because you've gotten better at oxidizing fat. Your cells want to oxidize fat. It is the preferred fuel. So it's going to make more mitochondria to handle that demand. We improve our mitochondrial flexibility. Flexibility is uh, the body's ability to utilize fat as opposed to glucose. As I've mentioned in previous videos, many people with metabolic diseases that I mentioned earlier have very poor flexibility. Their aerobic threshold, which is between zone two and three, is very low. Some people, uh, probably over 50% of people, transition from zone two to three with just walking. So all you need for zone two exercise is walking. Others, once they're better trained, can start to run in zone two and cycle and so on. So we need to get people to participate in low heart rate exercises to train the mitochondria, to increase the number and improve our mitochondrial flexibility. 
In addition, we increase the number of capillaries, which increases the blood flow and the delivery of nutrients to and away from our muscle cells. So hope that little insight into why zone two training is important helped a little. Bye.